Hi, I'm Mark Bunting. Welcome once again to Bunting's Window to the Net. This time, we're going to be focusing on Apple Computer. Now, Apple's in a rather unique position as it relates to the internet, the intranet, and the World Wide Web. Think about it for a moment. Apple produces products, technologies, and all of the areas necessary to take advantage of this new digital phenomena. They've got hardware, software, operating systems, servers, the like handheld devices, support, you name it, they play a role in every area related to distribution of content on the World Wide Web, the Internet, or the intranet. Apple's really got a three-pronged strategy as it comes to taking advantage of this new phenomena. First of all, creation of content, an Apple stronghold. Apple's been in the business of creating media-rich content for quite some time. It's an area that they're a hands-down leader. But that's only the first leg. The other two are the delivery of that content and accessing that information. Apple, again, has got products and technologies to serve you in all three of these arenas, and we're going to learn exactly how. In fact, our first stop is with Larry Tesler to learn a little bit about Apple's strategy for taking advantage of the Internet, and also looking at ways in which they're adopting and creating standards for you to really utilize this new digital phenomenon. Apple's goal is to make the Internet as easy to use as we made the Macintosh. The Macintosh has the most approachable and easy to use experience of any computer, and also is the leading multimedia computer. So what we're planning to do is bring a media-rich user experience to the internet. Really what the internet is all about is standards. The internet connects together many different kinds of computers, and it's not possible for it to use the standards of any particular system. One very important standard that we're adopting is one created by Sun Microsystems called Java. The importance of Java on the internet is that it creates dynamic content Instead of just a web page sitting there and showing you a picture and some text, it can do things. It can capture data into forms, it can give you animations and so on in a way that will run on any platform. So Apple's made a deal with Sun to license Java and we're going to be putting it in all our platforms. Certainly on the Macintosh, built into the operating system, but also built into the Newton and into the Pippin. One of the standards that Apple's contributing is QuickTime. QuickTime Media Layer has several parts. QuickTime, QuickTime VR, QuickTime Conferencing, and QuickDraw 3D. And each of these is a standard that we're promoting in the industry and working with other companies to work into their standards. QuickTime is the most popular standard for the creation of multimedia CD-ROMs, and it's also become by far the most popular standard on the internet. We've made it even better now for the internet by introducing QuickTime Fast Start. The idea here is that instead of downloading an entire QuickTime file before you can start watching it or listening to it, you can have it start to play while it's still downloading. And also it appears right in the web page that the user is looking at, so it just has a much better user experience. Netscape is so impressed by this that they've decided to bundle it with their Netscape Navigator 3.0 that's coming out this summer. And it's going to become a standard way to look at multimedia on the internet. Now just as Apple has contributed QuickTime as an internet standard, other companies have introduced technologies that have quickly been embraced and become internet standards as well. Now Larry mentioned uh, Sun Microsystems Java and of course Netscape. But Apple also has key relationships with many other internet players that are developing new technologies as well. The internet is so big and growing so fast that no one company can really make it all happen. So Apple's partnering with a lot of companies in the industry to bring state-of-the-art technology to Apple platforms. We're working with Sun on Java. We're working with SGI on 3D. We're working with Netscape on both the server side and the client side with Navigator. We're also working with Adobe on bringing really good-looking web pages to the internet and with Macromedia um, on their multimedia technologies such as Shockwave, which is a way to bring multimedia to web pages. And then we're working with dozens of other companies that add a lot of value to our products such as Quarterdeck that has WebStar, very popular web server on the, on the Macintosh. By creating technologies, adopting standards, and developing these partnerships, Apple is ensuring that you will experience content in the way in which the content developers intended, with all of its media richness, with graphics, animation, full motion video, and the like. The big question, of course, is what will content become? What is content tomorrow? The real value in the internet comes from its content, and 
Because the internet isn't just a continuation of previous media like television and newspapers, there are a lot of unique kinds of ways of forming communities and sharing information that the internet has developed, like news groups and web pages and so on. Apple's been experimenting with a concept called webcasting, where we broadcast live video from an event, for example, the Habitat II United Nations Conference in Pakistan. And anybody in the world can join into an online chat where they can uh, become part of it, not just observers of that event. We've accomplished so much on the internet, but there's even more left to do. How are people going to take all the data that they have in their web pages and their databases and, and access that stuff and make it available to people? How will people find things? What about when we get people from different cultures, different countries on the internet? How can they work together when they come from such different backgrounds? Apple's right in the middle of all this activity, and I just think this is the most exciting challenge that there can possibly be, and I'm having a great time doing this. Well, it's clear that the folks at Apple are truly expanding on their rich heritage when it comes to things like multimedia offering, desktop publishing, and of course the Macintosh trademark, ease of use. It's very evident that Mac is going to play a key role when it comes to the creation of content in this new digital world. Now, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to learn how Macintosh and Apple technology is going to allow us to access this content anywhere, any place, anytime. Stay tuned. Now, for a moment, let's focus on internet and intranet access. Apple is solving some pretty unique problems for IS managers by transitioning the networking standard for the Macintosh and the Newton into TCP IP. Now, what that means is that those of you that are actually developing intranets based on TCP IP protocols can now incorporate Apple products into your plans. Now, if you don't understand what TCP IP means, in very short layman's terms, it's the technology that's making it easy, affordable, and productive for all of us to access content on the internet and the World Wide Web. In fact, Apple's also got a technology called CyberDog, which embeds internet access directly into documents. Very cool stuff. Let's take a look. Apple's mission is to deliver the best media-rich user experience for accessing the internet. Now, a lot of people recognize Apple as being a leading vendor of personal computers, but what they don't realize is that Apple actually has three different architectures for providing access to the Internet. Of course, the Macintosh is well known as the easiest to use personal computer and in fact is the number one multimedia personal computer. But Apple also delivers the Newton architecture, which is ideal for um, handheld access to the Internet and the Pippin architecture, which works very well for people who want to access the Internet from their home using their television. The Macintosh commands a very strong position in the internet access market. A lot of people are surprised to learn that more than one-fifth of the people who are accessing the internet are using a Macintosh. And in fact, today, the leading internet application vendors, such as Microsoft and Netscape, are delivering their best-of-class internet applications on the Macintosh as well. Now, the strongest commitment that Apple can make to the internet is to make sure that every Macintosh computer that we ship out the door is fully internet ready. For desktop machines, that means high-speed LAN connections like Ethernet. For home machines and portable machines, it means high-speed dial-up connections via 28.8 modems or ISDN where applicable. The final piece of the puzzle is internet access software that best suits the level of expertise of the users across the different market segments that Apple services. For example, for home users who are maybe just getting started on the internet, we recommend that they use America Online. It provides an easy connection, managed content. But for people who want full, robust access to the latest and greatest internet technology, we offer a product called the Apple Internet Connection Kit. The Internet Connection Kit includes the best of class third party applications, so users can get up and running on the internet within 30 minutes of opening the box. Finally, we recently introduced a new technology which we call CyberDog. CyberDog is an integrated internet application suite. It's based on Apple's OpenDoc component architecture. Because it's based on OpenDoc, users can actually build customized front ends to the internet. So for example, a high school history teacher could use CyberDog to create a lesson plan about the Bosnian Civil War. 
The lesson plan would actually come in the form of a CyberDog document that they could send to their students via email. The student would see a list of sites on the internet that can contain relevant information to the lesson, go and explore those sites, and after exploring them, they could embed those sites into the CyberDog document. And then upon completing the lesson, the student would have a single document with links to all of the information on the internet that contains live, constantly updated information on the Bosnian Civil War. So with OpenDoc and CyberDog, Apple will deliver the best way of integrating internet access into a personal computer. You can see Apple's providing the total package, everything you need to take advantage of the internet. But how about uh, accessing the internet wirelessly or with your television? Apple has also developed the Newton architecture, which provides a great platform for accessing the internet from a handheld device. What Apple is doing is building into the Newton not only the necessary memory, but also all the core networking infrastructure, hardware, and software, so that developers can build great internet access applications for the Newton. For example, developers are building web browsers, email applications, news applications, so that no matter where a user is, whether they're on a bus or in the field or on the road, all they have to do to access the internet is click on the pad. Now, for people who want to access the internet from their home, but maybe they don't want to buy a computer, Apple has developed the Pippin architecture. Pippin is a low-cost device that you can connect to your television and provides all of the networking hardware and software, as well as the ability to play multimedia content, thereby making it a great, low-cost device for home users to access the internet. Now that's some great technology. Think about the ability to use all of those different kinds of tools, all those different means to access content worldwide, anywhere, anyplace, anytime on your company intranet, or of course surfing on the worldwide internet. Now let's switch gears a little bit. Of course, accessing content is one thing, but you have to have a system in place to deliver that content. And those systems are servers. Now Apple's designed two different server lines designed to meet very specific customer needs. First of all, there's the Apple Internet Server. Now that's based on the Mac OS and it's a very dependable server solution and it's the least expensive of the two we'll look at today. In addition, there's the Apple Network Server, which is based on the AIX version of Unix. Both of these are workhorse servers. Here's Fred Reynolds to tell us a little bit about them. Apple is deeply committed to this market. We understand the importance of delivering content on the Internet. And that's why we already have two complete families of Internet servers. There's the Apple Internet Server Solution and our brand new line of Unix-based network servers. There are huge numbers of people who want to be able to publish their presence on the Internet and on the World Wide Web. And not surprisingly, there are equally huge numbers of people who want to do that in an easy-to-use way, an operating system they already know how to use. Mac OS really is that operating system. We're on our second generation now of the Apple Internet Server Solution a Mac OS based web server in a box. You can literally, with an internet connection, have your own presence on the net in about five or 10 minutes. It's as easy as double clicking an application and you're a web publisher. We have large business enterprises such as Valvoline, who use the Apple internet server and already use the Macintosh operating system for their publishing or other needs. Once we made the decision we wanted to go up on the web, we decided to set a target date for that site. That target date would be the Indianapolis 500. The operation center we had at Indy was, was fantastic. It was a 48-foot luxury trailer. Our Apple servers were there in the control room. We shot all our pictures digitally, uh, downloaded at our site, put up on the servers immediately. Maybe four days before the race, we were averaging 50,000 uh, hits. And, and Three week period, we had over 500,000 kids. Frankly, one of the successes of our project has been we've been able to eliminate the headache of the equipment. Don't worry about that. That's there. It's working. It practically works itself. As far as uh, some of the other brands that are out there, Apple offered a very cost effective solution. Uh, we're able to get uh, a lot more computing power for, for the money. And of course, since it uses the Mac OS, you know it's very, very easy to use. Now for those of you who absolutely love, adore, and can't get enough of Unix, Apple's got a server solution for you there as well, the Apple Network Server. Again, here's Fred Reynolds. Apple's Network Server family is for customers who know Unix. 
customers who have an infrastructure and expertise to support a Unix server. Apple's network servers running on AIX offer fantastic reliability, high performance, and great serviceability. You can swap the redundant power supplies, you can swap the fans, you can access any component on the machine and swap it out in literally 60 seconds. You can even pull the motherboard out and replace it or service components on it all again within 60 seconds. We've used the network server family for our Mission Impossible website as well as for several of our webcasts. In addition, Tower Records just recently brought up its first commercial website using the Apple network server. Well, we're going to take a quick commercial break and when we come back we're going to look at an area where Apple has a very rich heritage. That's the creation of the content, the material that goes up on the World Wide Web. Apple's taking their expertise in desktop publishing, graphics, and creative content to this new digital arena. Stay tuned. Apple's taken its rich heritage, its traditional leadership, if you will, in the areas of publishing and media authoring to the web with some wonderful new tools. Now it's in this process, in the creation of content, whether you're publishing for an intranet or the internet, the content is king and the creation of that content is paramount. And Apple is once again leading the way when it comes to creative services and creative products. Here's Chris Golker to tell us about it. Well, our objective here is, is pretty straightforward. Macintosh is the dominant computer in print publishing. Uh, we have 80% market share there, and we'd like to drive that forward onto the internet, where we already have a very respectable 43% uh, share of uh, internet authoring. We're working with a, a number of developers, like Adobe Systems, for example. Uh, when PageMill 1.0 appeared, suddenly creative people could take control of pages the way they had in print world with PageMaker. And now with Adobe uh, PageMill 2.0, available this September, uh, creatives are going to be able to take the full extent, the full power of media-rich content that can be uh, put on worldwide web pages. And as easily as they created print pages in the past, using drag and drop and other Macintosh features, they'll be able to create those pages, very media-rich pages for the World Wide Web as well. Sun Microsystems Java language is another example. Uh, Java has a terrific potential for uh, creating interactive websites and media-rich uh, sites uh, on the World Wide Web, but it is a programming language. Uh, the Web Burst program from Power Production Software now makes that, um, that programming language accessible to a creative person, to somebody, a graphic designer, or somebody who is designing media-rich interactive content. They don't have to learn programming, they just have to uh, master traditional Macintosh skills like drag and drop, point and click. You can drop in pictures, you can drop in animations, you can take objects like buttons, drop them in as well. Uh, the toolbars allow you to uh, assign uh, actions to any of the objects. So for example, we can make the animation run. Uh, we can wire a button to an action so that clicking the button causes the action to happen. And all of these things, once they're done and once the uh, artist or the creative person has interactively edited them to their uh, liking, they can just simply export as a Java applet. Without having written a single line of code, a fully functional Java applet is exported, ready to run on the World Wide Web. Another message I, I guess is important here is that a very similar thing happened in the print production space. Desktop publishing, when it debuted, allowed a vastly faster, more efficient, less expensive uh, production paradigm uh, to exist. And we're seeing that, that same thing happening on the internet now with tools like WebBurst and PageMill. We're seeing a, a rebirth, if you will, of uh, a DTP for the internet. You know, I think that desktop publishing analogy is really appropriate. It seems to make sense that the same leadership technology that you're using to create your content should come to play when you're trying to deliver that content or access that same information. Now another good example of this is the web authoring tools marketplace. Most of the products being produced today to produce and create content are being done so on the Macintosh platform and then ported to other environments. Now we know that IS has embraced the concept of the intranet. That's a given. They're popping up everywhere. Again, most of that inward-bound content for an intranet is being created on a Macintosh. 
Whether it's a corporate brochure, a human resources manual, maybe it's a training video, Mac is still leading the way when it comes to the creation of that content. Why not use their rich heritage to deliver that content and to access that information, whether it's an intranet or an internet? So whatever you're setting up, I can assure you, Apple deserves a very close look. Well, I also would recommend that you take a close look at our website where you can actually see a rebroadcast of this entire program with both real-time video and audio right over your 28.8 modem over the internet at www.bunting.com. Now, not only can you watch the show, but you can link up with Apple's website and all the other companies that we're visiting on this series. Well, until next time, for Bunting's window to the net, stay wired. This is your host, Mark Bunting. I'll see you.